friends, I've been so busy telling you about my new Angels and Awakening book that came out on November 11th that I forgot to share with you that we have a new course starting December 1st. It's a four-week course called Deepening Your Connection with Your Loved Ones in Heaven. This course is already included if you're an angel member. If you're not an angel member, you can buy the course on theangelmedium.com. I also wanted to let you know, if you're looking to become an angel member, January or February are the best months to start. For a limited time, if you get two new people to sign up for the angel membership annual plan, then I'll give you an entire year of the angel membership for free. When you do, you'll also be guaranteed to be able to book a session with me in 2022. Friends, due to the voice disorder, the number of sessions I can do is limited. But the first 100 people who sign up for the angel membership annual plan, which to be transparent costs $1,200 for the whole year, I'm going to guarantee you the ability to book a session with me in 2022. And right now, friends, it's looking like those may be the only sessions I'll be able to fulfill next year. You can always book a session on my website with one of the incredible healers I've trained who are now on my team. There's Karen, Erica, Adria, Kara, and Cheryl, and their gifts are all a lot like mine. Friends, you are my angels. If you're looking for a great gift idea this holiday season, my book is in stock and ready to ship from Barnes & Noble and worldwide from Amazon. Write a positive review about the book or share it on your Instagram feed and we'll enter you into a drawing to win a free session with me. This month's winner is Autumn Grimes, who did a whole video about the book. Thank you, Autumn. Lastly, Archangel Haniel reminds you that a new class of the Angel Reiki School begins December 1st. And if she's been calling you to take the course, it's for a reason. Let her and I coach you to become the healer you were born to be. All right, friends, now let's dive into the show. Hello, beautiful souls. It's Julie. Welcome to the Angels and Awakening podcast. I'm your host. And today we are here with what was one of my favorite sessions. They, you know, you have so many sessions when you do this work and there are certain ones that just stick out in your mind as like, they take your breath away, right? Because you know, spirit comes through in every session, but this is a really powerful session between three sisters, the Harvey sisters. And if you're watching on YouTube, ladies, say your name so that everybody knows like who they're watching. Okay. Hi, I'm Caitlin. I'm Mackenzie. And I'm Madison. Hello, ladies. Okay. So two of you had a visitation dream that we talked about in the session. Kind of tee it up for everybody so that they remember, like, kind of talk about the session a little bit. Because I remember the dream came up, but I don't remember how that came up during the session. I think we were just kind of looking for validation at that point. You know, we had received some signs around it as well, but... We just kind of wanted to hear, you know, straight from the horse's mouth. Was that, like, was that real? Was yeah. That, you know, yeah. I mean, yes. Because tell everybody, your mom's on the other side. Tell everybody a little bit about. So my, our mom, um, <laughs> she was 55. She passed away from breast cancer and breast cancer complications in February. And so it's very sudden. Yeah. I didn't get any closure from it. Yeah. We didn't realize how sick she was until... She came home and she passed away the next day. So it was very sudden. Yeah. And then we lost our aunt three weeks later, her sister. Yeah. So it was kind of a whirlwind of emotions. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And both of them came through in your session. Tell everybody about these visitation dreams. Because she came in at one point and she said something to the effect of, you're not thinking that that's real, me inside your dreams, but it is. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to start 
with your side or my side? You can start with your side. Julie, you know, but our dreams kind of overlapped a little bit, which was really interesting. So in my dream, I was riding a bicycle around my parents' neighborhood and it kind of looked familiar, kind of didn't. And I'm just riding around the neighborhood and I see a yard full of people and I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird. And I see this beautiful pink, like energy, this beautiful pink light. And it starts moving towards me. And the closer it gets, the more I realize it's, it's my mom. And she's, you know, she's waving at me and she looks like she's getting ready to say something. And then somebody darts out right in front of me and mom takes off after her. So I'm chasing them down on my bike and I'm like, what the heck is going on? Like, I was so sure it was a visitation from mom. And, you know, you just, you get that feeling in your heart. And I was so sure that's what it was, but then she's just gone. And, and so then I, that day I was having a little day. It was like, what, two days before her aunt died. And I was just struggling. It was on the three week anniversary of mom dying. And I had just cried out to her and was like, I need you to visit me. I need to know you're okay. And so I, same thing, I'm walking down the street and I see in your dream. In my dream, I'm walking down the street. I didn't know what street I was on. I just knew it was a street and there was a house party and I'm walking and same thing before I could even see her face. I knew it was her. I could just feel her. And she walked past me and she didn't say anything. She just kind of smiled at me and she kept going. And I went, mom. And she turned around with the biggest smile and she ran into me. And I told them it was like, it was more than a hug. It was literally like our souls were hugging each other. It was so much deeper than just any hug I could give to them. And she goes, stop crying, stop crying. And I couldn't stop crying. I'm like, are you okay? She's like, I'm okay. Stop crying. And so then she said, well, Maddie, I know you have a lot of questions, so let's get into it or let's get after it. And she said, mm -hmm. and first I just asked if she was all right. And she said, yes, I'm, I'm great. And I said, well, is it all true? Is it, what if it's not real? What if God's not real? And what if, you know, you don't get to meet your family on the other side. And she's like, you know, it's all real. You know, it's true. And I said, so you're with grandma. Cause our grandma passed away 20 years ago. And she was like, yes, I'm with everyone. It's beautiful. And I said, well, then how come you're not with them right now? And she said, cause you're here. And I was like, okay. And so then she ended the dream. We hugged and she said, okay, I have to go. I have to go find Katie. I have to go find Katie. And then it was over and I woke up and I was like, I got to ask Katie if she had a dream because she was so adamant that she had to go find my sister. And so I send a message to Katie and I didn't hear back. And I go, well, obviously she didn't have a dream because I would have heard something. And Katie woke up and sent a video and it was like, it was like she saw a ghost. Her mm -hmm. face was completely pale and she's like, why are you asking that? And then she told us about her dream. And they were same night and everything. It was so cool. Yeah, it was awesome. And you <laughs> described mom too as this pink oh, yeah. energy. And this is before they had talked about, they just said, do you associate a color with the dream you had? And both of them said pink, pink. for whatever reason. Wow. <laughs> so when you both woke up in the morning, like first thing, you're just by yourself with your own consciousness, you wake up. Did you remember right away the dream? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Every detail. It's yeah, it, yeah. Every detail. And now it's been what, almost six months since then. So little bits kind of fade from my memory, but yeah, I mean, I still remember, I, still remember or I can't remember my dreams, any of my dreams since mom died. I think it's probably some grief thing that I can't remember things, but that dream I cannot forget. I mean, it, yeah. the feelings that came with it and came. you like woke up, crying. I woke up bawling and it was like the bottom of my soul was just, I couldn't control it. it mm -hmm. I, and it was crazy. Okay. A couple of things here. Your mom said you remember it because it wasn't a dream. It was an experience yeah. and I've never heard them kind of say it or phrase it that way, but that's a beautiful way to phrase it. Yeah. And the other thing is, did you find healing in it too? Because talk to like that point about it. 
I think what's so powerful about these meditation dreams is that there's a lot of telepathic communication that happens through it. And I find that in my sessions too, right? There's a part of energy that clears or heals in an energy healing session, like Angel Reiki that I started or Reiki or Chios energy healing. But there's also this component of messages come through and clear energy and heal energy as well. And so talk about that healing aspect. Well, I think we were all just very, I mean, we were struggling because we knew that it was, we were going to be losing our ear and we didn't know if they would be together or what happens. I mean, we all have faith, but we, I mean, we were just like, we hadn't gotten any signs from her really up until the dreams. And so we were like, I just couldn't help but feel like, what if everything I'm going to to just gone? And what if everything I believe is fake? I mean... You know, my mom was not an overly religious person by any means, but she, she knew she would come back. The last thing she said to us pretty much was tell Laban, my seven-year-old, tell Laban, I'll try not to scare him when I come to visit. I mean, she knew <laughs> she'd be back. Did that come out in the session too? Uh, I that part, I don't think so. Okay. Okay. Mom was spiritual yeah. in the kind of same way that we are, where she received signs from her mom as well. All the yeah. time. And. Okay. So I think that kind of opened us yeah. to, yeah, because things would happen when we were kids and she'd say, don't, don't be scared of that. That's just grandma <laughs> coming to say that. Kenzie and I were like, do not come visit us when you, <laughs> yeah, they, 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 <laughs> oh, that was you not that scary. And she's like, when it's your mom, it will be comforting. Yeah. We're like scared. No, I don't think so. And now obviously we're like, mom, please. Yeah. That'd be safe. It is not a girl. Yeah. <laughs> but so the dreams really just, it, first of all, the fact that they happened on the same night, it was like, there was no deny yeah. that that was a legitimate experience. Yeah. Yeah. Too big to write off. To just write yeah. off. Yeah. Because other times you have dreams and you're like, well, it could have been a visitation, but maybe you not. Know, it could have just been, you know, you're like, you talked about your ego with mine talks you out of it. But this was, two of us had the same thing. So we couldn't deny it. It had to have been real. And then it made us, it gave us comfort that the messages she brought. Yeah. And We're like you said, it tell it We both talked about it. We never actually heard her voice, but inside we knew what she was saying and she knew what we were saying, even though we weren't talking with our, our words, our mouths, but the conversation, it was like your hearts, were, your hearts, your souls knew what the other was saying. It was incredible. Mm-hmm. And that is what it's like when you're doing this work. And you're talking to them on the other side. When people talk about the four clairs of knowing, feeling, seeing, hearing, what they're really talking about is this telepathic language where it's just communicated in a way that's very, very unique. And anybody can learn how to turn this on within themselves and be receptive and open to it. So... Did that help you then believe? Because I know that she was showing up with like a lot of signs and angel numbers. Tell people about like the signs that she was sending you and maybe how that helped you believe that that was her. She was still there. Yeah. Yeah. So the first, so we had started reading signs by Lauren Lynn Jackson. And that kind of got me thinking after the dreams that that morning, it was like, you know what? I'm just going to ask her for a sign. And, you know, she says to make it kind of random. So it's, it sticks out like a sore thumb and says that you don't see every day. Yeah. So the first thing that popped into my head was an ostrich. I don't see ostriches all the time. I don't know about you. (laughs) You don't see those. Yeah. And so I, I told her, you know, out loud, I just said, mom, you know, if that was you, if you really did visit Maddie and I, I, I would appreciate if you could show one of us an ostrich. And so that night I, I was looking through an old thumb drive to get pictures. So that night I'm looking through an old thumb drive, trying to find pictures for the slideshow I was making for her memorial. And I get to the very last picture in this thumb drive and it's an emu. 
which is very similar to an ostrich. And I, I knew it was an emu just because I was like raised by animal planet, <laughs> but I thought, okay, well, you know, either maybe mom thinks I don't know the difference between an ostrich and an emu or that there's nothing. So I share it with the twins and Maddie, you said, I said, I don't know if I'd count that. It's gotta be more clear, like an ostrich walking down the street. <laughs> And then later that night, I open up TikTok and the first video on my page is an ostrich strutting down a highway in between during like a rush hour. Yeah. And I send them that and I'm like, well, I think she got the message. <laughs> and that was like our first sign. Yeah. And then it just kind of like, yeah, it was like the floodgates a little bit and that. signs yeah. anything we ask for, it shows up. Yeah. yeah. She's always delivering. <laughs> she even kind of makes herself known in ways that we didn't initially ask for it, like your bee. Oh yeah. So on Easter, it was our first holiday without mom. And every year we'd come here, well, since the kids were born, we'd come here and she would do an Easter egg hunt for the kids. And so it was our first time. And my dad was never involved in that, but he wanted to keep the tradition alive. So he had us come over and he went out bright and early and hid eggs. And I thought that was cute. <laughs> and so we get here and the boys are looking for eggs and my mom's neighbor was outside and she came up to us and told us how sorry she was. And we had just said, we were just talking about, cause she goes, you know, she was gardening every day. We used to see her every single day and then it just stopped or, you know, we were like, where'd she go? And we were just talking about how sad we were that mom wasn't there and you know how bad we wish she would be here with us and then she said something like you know it's so funny the whole time you guys are talking there's a bumblebee or a honey honeybee hovering in between you two like yeah. right eye level with both of yeah. us right here hovering the whole time and so we kept you know like looking at it and we're still <laughs> talking and we don't want it we don't want to tell her that like we're like okay i think that's our mom <laughs> she'll think we're nuts and so we just ignored it and then i just kind of turned to it and was like hi and then it blow it <laughs> that's thing that she told me before i acknowledged it yeah, it left and then yours yeah so probably uh, two or three days later i was at bmx track watching my boyfriend race and, you know, I was sitting kind of just by myself in this beautiful field and I got to thinking about mom and, you know, I started to tear up a bit and I was just talking to her and all of a sudden I looked down and there's a, a little honeybee just crawling around on me and it, it stayed on me for a good five minutes. Yeah. Just so, crawling all yeah, over. I just, cause I had told her, you know, I just, I just wish you weren't here. Yeah. And it, yeah. 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 And so then. Thinking back to the book that we were reading, we're talking about how weird that was that the honeybee on Easter and then the honeybee on her. And I said, I'm just going to ask mom for a sign if that honeybee was her. And we were like, we just, we don't need a sign in it. We just know when it, it was her. I just want to, you know, I just want validation mainly because I just wanted to hear from her. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, what is the most random thing I could think of? And I was just on a walk and I said, I videoed them and I said, okay, I asked mom show us a tie-dye balloon if the bees were you. Cause I'm like, I've, I don't see tie-dye balloons, I guess. And so I said, and she could show any of us the balloon. And I think it was the next day or possibly that evening, I went to Safeway to get groceries for dinner. And I usually do self-checkout, but for whatever reason, I decided to go to the, like check out one, which is closest to the door. And I was kind of looking at the teller and something caught my eye off the, like the corner of my eye. And I looked and it was a giant bee tie-dye balloon. The wings were tie-dye and I had not been to Safeway since mom had passed away. Cause I just wasn't doing my shopping. I was doing like, you know, grocery pickup and it was a huge tie-dye bee balloon. And I was like, just my job out hit the floor. <laughs> I was like, okay. I mean, that's, that's our sign. You know, she's saying, yep, that those bees are me. Not just the tie dye, not the yeah, tie dye evil. And so <laughs> we were like blown away by that. And like three days later, I'm scrolling through Facebook and she like almost at the exact same time was scrolling through. And one of my mom's old coworkers, her brother had passed away like two years ago. And my mom had given her like a journal and she'd never opened the journal. So she's had it for two years and like 
three days after this bee balloon, she finally opened the journal. And in the journal, my mom had drew a picture and it was a bee and it was a flower. And she put be happy, loved on. And she posted it on her Facebook and we would have never, you know, had she not posted it, we would have never seen it. But here we're asking for validation that these beads are her. And two days later, there's a drawing from my mom with a B and it says being happy on our Facebook. I was just, I was like, hey, look at this. And Katie said, I just saw that my jaw about his <laughs> It was crazy. Yeah. That is incredible. I mean, you can't get much more clear. No, 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 you really can't. Yeah. Well, and then with the same thing with the bees, I had taken my son to a town about an hour away and, and he had a doctor's or a dentist appointment and they had said that he needed some fillings done. And I was really upset. And cause I felt like over the last couple of months, I've just been slacking in motherhood. I mean, I've been <laughs> grieving obviously. Yeah. And and so I'm smelling like a failure and I, I just cried and cried and cried. And then my son goes, can we go downtown and look at the toy store? And I'm like, no, that's the last thing I want to do. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, whatever, let's just do it. So we go downtown and there's no parking nearby. And so we have to park like three blocks down. I park in this one, there's one spot open and I pull into it and we get out and I look up and the whole window display is honeybee. And I was like, I just started to smile and I sent a picture to my sisters and my son was like, what are you doing? Why are you smiling so big? And I was like, well, honeybees are reminding me of grandma. And he was like, yeah, I was really sad there for a little bit. And I said, why? And this was like the coolest experience over here. Yeah. He's like, well, at my dentist appointment, I could feel her let go or I could, I could feel her. Yeah. I think he said I could feel her let go. And I was like you couldn't and he was like no she's always holding on to me and for whatever reason i was sitting there and she wasn't holding me anymore and he's and i said do you feel her touching you often and he goes yeah she's always hugging me and he goes i know it's her because i remember her touches and i know what she feels like and he goes but she just left and he goes i'm so scared that she wouldn't come back but she's back now and i was like huh, that's really interesting and I said, well, I was really upset at the dentist. So she probably left you to hold on to me, but it was just really cool to hear he was six to say that, I mean, you know, he knows that she's with him and he can just feel her. And I thought that was so cool. <laughs> and it makes total sense. You know, she was obsessed with him. Yeah. That, that was, her. he was her best friend since the day he was born. Yeah. So that know that he feels her often and you know i didn't know i was like and i think that's what we had talked about in the reading i said you know how do i know because my son especially him now that the three-year-old talks about her a little bit too and has dreams that are i think are real but i was like they're little how do you know if they're actually feeling her do they just say that because they know it'll make him happy you know but to hear him say that i was like he wouldn't just say that. I mean, he would. Well, and something to note too, before we even talked about the kids oh. in the reading, she had said, there's going to come a time where the kids are going to say grandma's here or, you know, I saw grandma or whatever. And she said, trust that, you know, the kids are really receptive to it. And so now since then, these kids, the kids have come forward and they've been having these dreams. And it's like, she wants to her egoic mind wants to say like, no, they're just saying that because no. they've heard me say whatever. And it's like, now I think, listen to yeah. what mom said, trust them. <laughs> you know, I think they've seen her. That's amazing. That's amazing. I, I talk about this a little bit in the book that's going to be coming out in November too. It's going to be called Angels and Awakening, just like the podcast. So it's easy for people to find, but that was one of like the biggest I feel like healing moments for me too, after my dad passed away was, uh, I talk about this realization and how signs came through where I knew that my dad wasn't just talking to me. He was talking to my daughter. He was talking through my husband and like, I guess there was some sort of just peace that comes over you when you know. You don't have to worry as hard. You don't have to fret as hard. They're doing even so much more for us from the other side yeah. than they could even possibly be doing here. 
And truly that all is taken care of Mm -hmm. in a way. Well, and like my six-year-old, so mom passed away February 27th and my six-year-old was here, but he was upstairs. He wanted to come and say goodbye. So he held her hand and talked to her for a couple hours. And then he went upstairs. He didn't know she passed away. When he left, she was actually gone, but he just said, bye, grandma. He thought she was asleep. asleep. And so we didn't, I didn't tell him because I didn't know how that was his best friend and I knew it would crush him and so I didn't tell him for a day yeah yeah so then the next day or the day after I woke up and I told him I was like hey bud you know we gotta talk and I'm like grandma passed away and he said is that why she visited me last night and I said what do you mean and he he said I had a dream about her and she looked healthy and I said well what did she look like he said before she got that cancer and her hair fell out and I was like, well, what did she say? And he said that she's not in pain anymore and that she loves me and she misses me. And she's happy. And she's happy. And I just, and that was obviously before anybody had gotten any sort of dream or sign from her. And he didn't even know that she was gone, but yet he had had that dream. And I just thought that was so amazing because I had no doubt she was going to visit him before anyone else. Yeah, I mean, he was definitely basic for that. Yeah, I mean. So that was really special to know that she, before she did anything, she made sure he knew she was okay. (laughs) That's amazing. That's amazing. So you had written down some questions for me to ask you and you put, tell me about your storybook story, booking a reading with me. Okay. Well, well, so we wanted to book a reading. Your podcast basically just like fell into our laps when it was probably two weeks after mom died. I was just, I don't even listen to podcasts. I've I've only listened to one podcast in my life. And for whatever reason, I get on the podcast app and it says suggested for you or podcast you might like, and it was your podcast. And I was like, okay, well, I feel like I'm supposed to listen to it. So I'm going to listen to it. And so I started listening to your angel stories and was like, I love this. And so I sent it to my sisters and Katie instantly started listening to it. And she listened to it more than I did. Yeah. Every single time she's in, I just had unplayed hours. So I went onto your website and I signed up for your newsletter because I was like, I would love for us to book a reading someday. And we were going to book it in April for May. I was like, our birthday was in May, mine and Kenzie's. And so I was like, I'd love to do one around our birthday because I feel like mom would come through. Well, I got the email that, you know, we could book and I get on and everything is taken. And I was like, okay, well, I guess it wasn't meant to be. And so I was like, well, whatever, you know, we'll get it next, we'll get it next time. (laughs) And so then the next month in May, it was, our birthday was the 11th and we didn't get any signs for mom. And I was like, well, what the heck? You know, she's, she's out here every single day. I haven't gotten anything. So the next day I just woke up and felt like I needed to see if there was bookings, you know, if we could book something and I still had the link from, you know, your, the last month. And I sent it to my sisters and I was like, I'm going to see if there's anything open. Well, you had like, hadn't released your days yet, but I could see that there were days. And so I was like, I don't know if I can book one now or should I wait? And I was like, well, I'll just wait until they send something. So I ended up like getting in touch with your office and they were like, yeah, we're going to be releasing the days today. Like that was good timing. And so I finally, I get on and you guys send the email at like, you know, 1130 or whatever. And I instantly hop on and every day there was a couple spots and my mom's birthday was the third of June. And there was one spot open at two o'clock. So I booked it immediately and Katie texts me and she's like, you just booked the spot. And I was like, how did you know? Yeah. Cause I, I had been running errands around town, listening to Dua Lipa, her pilot. Oh, <laughs> love her. Yeah. Love her. <laughs> yeah. Ten out of six. Ten out of ten. Uh, but so I've been listening to her playlist all morning and all of a sudden the next song was a sing together by train which was mom's favorite band and it just so happened to be the song she sang on her deathbed yeah and i just i knew at that moment like something just happened and i knew that she was waiting for a slot and i was so literally as i pressed book her playlist switched so was over from that to train and yeah that was mom but 
before she fell asleep, she was like, I want to listen to train. And so that was the last song that we all sang with her, sing it together and all sang it together. Yeah. And that pops on at the same time that I booked the reading. And then I walk, I go to my mom's house because I was just on a high. <laughs> I was like, I can't wait for this and come to my mom's house for lunch. And then I walk down to Starbucks, which is just like a block away. And one of the cars in the parking lot, which I had taken a picture of this car, like the day before my birthday and the license plate was 263 and mom's birthday was 63. So I had taken a picture and I was going to send it to my sisters to say, Hey, you guys, cause then it said like DH or my mom's name was Don Harvey. So it was her 263 and her initials. And I was going to send it to my sisters. Well, I forgot about it until I saw it that day. And then I'm like, Oh my God, we have a reading with Julie at two o'clock on six, three. And so I sent it to my sisters and was like, you guys, and sure enough, since then we see two, two six, three or three, six, two. Yeah. It is very glaring. And Kenzie, even one of her signs for mom was a $2 bill. And she on Easter in a bumblebee A. Yeah. So I had not gotten, you know, every other sign we'd asked for within like a day that would come up. And it had been like a week since I'd asked for the $2 bill. And I asked for that because I only see them once a year during Christmas time, because my mom would always go to this corn dog man in town and he would give $2 bills as cheap. <laughs> so that always reminds me of my mom because she loved the corn dog man. <laughs> so <laughs> just a man who makes corn. Yeah. He makes corn dogs. But my mom really loves. And then, so I had said, you know, my sign for you is a $2 bill and I hadn't gotten any of those. And I was, we had just left here after the B thing. And I was talking to her on my way out to my in-laws house. I was like, where, where are you? You know, I haven't seen my $2 billing yet. And I was like, you know, I'm starting to get kind of upset. Like you forgot about me. And I go out to my sister-in-law's house and they had done their Easter egg hunt like two hours before and I missed it. And I was sitting at the kitchen table and there was one egg and it was a gold egg. Oh. It was not a bumblebee. But that was a different one. So I went there and there was a gold egg on the table and it was just sitting right in front of me, but I didn't really think anything of it. And my niece came up and she goes, Kenzie, look what's inside of it. And she pops it open and it, a $2 bill flings out of it. And I was just like, and then she was like, can you hide some bees or can you hide some eggs for me? And she brought her a little thing and right on top was a bumblebee egg. But so then he, after we booked the reading, she pulls out the $2 bill. She goes. I got to check something. And she pulls out the $2 bill that she got on Easter. And sure enough, the serial number starts with 263. Yeah. And she's like, oh, not in the house. I was like, it was written in the stars. <laughs> that is, I mean, like your mom is so crystal clear. Like she just comes in and you know what? She just said, you know, like if you're ever waiting and you're like wondering where is your sign, it always comes down to a matter of timing. Like they right, just yeah. have to time stuff up to be perfect. Have you ever watched the movie Interstellar? I've seen bits of it. Yeah, I don't think I have seen it. So to me, that movie isn't about, you know, what we think it is. It's more so the story of what happens when we kind of pass on and we're still connected with our children here on earth. And there's this one part where he's kind of going through, I forget what they call it. He's going through like this black hole and it's almost like he comes into this point of reality where he can see every moment that his daughter's going to walk through in this bedroom. And it's almost like energetically, it doesn't look to him completely like we see out of our eyes. It looks like all of these lines of energy forming the picture that we see. Mm -hmm. And so he starts to move the lines of energy and as it does, it shifts things in the room. And it's very distinctive of how they can, from the other side, kind of scroll through. It's almost like when you're watching a movie and you can go backwards or you can go forwards, you can see everything that's going to happen and even more detailed than we can. And they can like line up things specifically the way that they need to. Or, yeah. 
Yeah. It's amazing that she's been able to do as much as she has. <laughs> and she's even given um, signs through other people. Like randomly, someone will say something to us that we're just like, that was weird, you know, like, and so one of them, it kind of goes in with the dreams. I haven't had a, my visitation dream yet. I think she's saving it for something. But so I, when we first saw the ostrich, I was like, are we crazy? Like, are we the only ones that have experienced this? I mean, we were reading the book and a lot of other people had had these signs, but no one in our like circle circle has really lost anyone, you know, I mean, grandparents and all of that, but not like their parents. And so they haven't maybe asked for these signs or whatever. And so I had posted on my Instagram and I was like, do you believe in like signs from your loved ones on the other side? And do you believe in visitation dreams? And I had a friend reach out to me and she had said that, so her cousin had passed away when we were all in high school and it was very tragic and horrible. And so we were friends with her in high school and middle school and all of that. And so her cousin had reached out to me and said, once a year, and she said, I don't know if this is anything, but once a year I have a dream where she comes to visit me and we catch up. We talk about what it's like for her on the other side. We talk about my life and it happens right before the anniversary of her death. And she said, I, I dream about her all the time, but I don't always remember my dreams. And she said, but once a year I wake up and I'm crying and I know or I feel like it was her. And she said, she always hugs me goodbye at the end. And I start crying because it's like, I'm losing her all over again. And I said, well, I'm reading this book and that sounds a lot like what they described in that. And I really think she's coming to visit you. And she was like, oh my gosh, that's so awesome. You just made my day. Well, we haven't talked for months. You know, that was three weeks after mom died. And now we're at six months and like three days before the six month anniversary, we were all talking about like. You know, we can't believe it's been six months and we just really want to feel mom. We really want to hear from her and all of that. And I get, well, Maddie was at a water park that my mom always wanted to take the boys to and the waves, she was in the wave pool and the waves stopped going and she heard a train song come on the speakers overhead, which once again was our mom's favorite band. And it was a song that is not a popular song, but I mean, it was I mean, it's popular, but it's not like their most popular song. And what song was it? Play that song. Yeah. 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 So play that song by train. And she was like, if the waves had kept going, I wouldn't have heard it. But the waves stopped. I heard the song and right when the song ended, the waves started going again. And we were like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. You know, and I was driving to a banquet and I was talking to my mom and I said, man, I wish you'd give me a train sign. You know, I, I haven't heard from you in a while. And. I get into this banquet and like an hour into it, I feel my phone vibrate and I look at it. And one of my friends from town texted me and said, I'm out at dinner and play that song by train just came on the radio and it made me think of you. And I was like, that same song twice, you know, in one day. And so we're talking about it and all of us are like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. And I was like, oh, she's out here. You know, she's talking to us and I wish she'd give us more. Well, we all go to bed that night and I wake up the next morning and the first thing I do is I get on my Instagram and that friend from earlier had messaged me and she said, I really hope this doesn't upset you, but I, I have something I need to share with you. And I'm like, I read that and I'm like, oh, great. I, well, I was in trouble or something. <laughs> and so she said last night, and this was the, like the day before the one year anniversary or right, but like the week before, I can't remember of the one year anniversary or the anniversary of her cousin's passing. She said, I had my dream last night about, you know, my cousin and it was the same as every other visitation dream before. And she said, you know, we talked, we caught up, it was magical. And she went to hug me goodbye like she always does. And she said, before I go, there's one thing I have to say. John said, tell the girls hello. And that is, my mom always referred to us as the girls. She never said when she'd say like, oh, I need to talk. She wouldn't say I've got to talk to Maddie, Katie, and Kenzie. She'd say, I'll talk to the girls and I'll get back to you. And so she said, I just knew that was a message from your mom. And that was like, we were all just like, oh my gosh. And it was cool because in our reading, you had said that there was 
somebody that we knew from high school or something that was trying to come through that mm -hmm. wasn't in our, you know, they would just check on our dollars. church, just check in. And we kind of thought maybe it was Amy, but we weren't a hundred percent sure. Mm -hmm. And so then the fact that our friend Jesse had a dream about Amy telling us that mom says hello, we were like, okay, that had to have been Amy. Yeah. You yeah. know, in our reading, yeah, kind of trying to tie those two together. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I love that. I love that throughout this entire time too, you've been talking about bringing through messages or messages coming through to you from other people. And that is something that we really haven't talked about a lot on the podcast and everybody hears from spirit. They just don't realize and they don't know how to decipher a lot of times between that egoic mind and that intuitive voice. Because once you know how to connect with your intuition, it's very easy to talk to anybody on the other side, break them through. The reason though, like the angels keep saying that this keeps coming up is because it's for people who are listening right now, whether it's on YouTube or on the podcast or on Instagram, but what they want you to know is that when you get those positive loving messages and you feel like you should reach out to somebody, it's mm -hmm. not just you, right? It, it isn't maybe placed there by you. It's placed yeah. there by somebody on the other side who you are the open vessel. You're yeah. open. You're, you're okay with making that phone call or sending that text messenger, that screenshot of something that you saw and that is the sign that somebody else needs. So we can be one another's angels yep. yeah. and, and help one another in that way, which is just so incredible. There's a couple other questions here. Okay. Tell me about the lights. Oh, <laughs> so the day before our reading with you, my sister and I were in my baby's nursery and we were sitting there and we're just talking about long and how we can't wait for the reading and we're so hopeful that she's going to come through and all of a sudden the lights in the nursery just start going like great like crazy like a strobe light and we just watched it and watched it and watched it and i mean it was it felt like forever it probably was you know 30 seconds but we just watched it and then our her son came in and, that, and we said look at the lights and he just flicked it on and off and it stopped and we're like Okay, well, maybe the, I, you know, maybe the switch was like stuck in the middle or something, something weird, you know, and we didn't really think much of it. And then the next day we had our reading with you and towards the end, you said your, your mom is coming through and she's saying, she knows you see the flickering light. She wants you to know that's her. And we all just were like, and so ever since then, it's always in my son's nursery. Yeah. No other room in the house has lights that flicker like this, but. I'll be talking about my mom, like maybe to my baby, I'll be like, oh, your grandma's on with love that. And the lights will start flickering. And so I thought it was just the light bulb, you know, I mean, I still like, she said it was her, but of course my mind is thinking it can't, she, she couldn't possibly be. And so I changed the light bulb and it still would happen. And, and then, you know, a couple, like a month ago or so I had that light off because I was like in that first while that strobe light is going to, you know, give him like a seizure or something and he's trying to go to bed. And so I had that off and I turned on the salt light lamp that, or yeah, salt lamp thing that my mom had got both of us, or maybe all three of us for Christmas a couple of years ago. And I had that in there just as a little nightlight and I was putting him down in the crib and I was just kind of looking down at him watching and out of like the corner of my eye. I looked up and the salt light was flickering too. And that has happened like four times now where I'll be rocking him in his chair or I'll be putting him down, not looking at it. I'll look down, but it flickers enough to get my attention. And then of course I'll be like, do it again. And then she won't. <laughs> But it's weird. It's always in that room. So that has been very interesting. And she came through in the reading and said, when you see those lights, know that that's me. So that was really cool. That's amazing. And Madison has a story about the first time that she tried oneness meditation. Oh, that was just 
crazy. So Katie's done the meditating, you know, she listens to your podcast and then at the end she always sits and, you know, tries to get oneness or whatever. And so I hadn't tried it though. I'm a mom of three and I work full time. I'm busy. I don't have time to sit and, you know, do that. I want to, but I just don't. And Kenzie and Katie have always felt like I get more sign, you know, and I just, for whatever reason, I don't know if I'm more open to it or what, but they've always been like, there's something special there. Like, you know, you need to go further. And you had said in the reading, when I had my visitation dream, mom and I had gone to this, I want to say like a field almost, but nowhere that I recognized. And she just kept saying, look how beautiful it is. Look how beautiful it is. And you had said that that was her home on the other side. And you had said that mom, mom said, if I could just try and get back there through meditation, that I, I could do that. And so mom wanted me to work on that. And so one day I go home from one or I go to lunch and I come here because I'm like, you know what? I'm, or we're at my parents' house right now. So <laughs> she's like, okay, but I'm like, I'm going to go meditate on my lunch, whatever, you know, why not? So I come over to my parents' house and I go into the backyard and I'm listening to your podcast and it's almost like, I feel like I'm like the birds are right in my ears, almost like I'm not on the ground anymore. You know, I mean, it was just cause I'm sitting in the backyard. It was just, I've never experienced something like that. And I'm closing my eyes and it's just so bright, even though, you know, I know I'm outside, but it wasn't overly sunny and I've sat outside in the sun before. <laughs> this was totally different. It was like golden almost. And I could not make out people's faces, but I could see four shapes in front of me and they didn't move. It wasn't like, you know, sometimes you close your eyes and you can see lights moving around. Yes. Yeah. Was just four, four, I want to say body. Yeah. Yeah. Four beings right in front of me. And I was trying so hard to like see who they were, but I couldn't, but it was just, it was just weird. And I could almost feel like my head doing like, you know, kind of moving, but I wasn't doing that. It was really trippy <laughs> and especially for my first time meditating, I obviously didn't know what was normal, what to expect, but then, you know, the eight minutes were up and the podcast ended and something else came on and then it was just, it was gone. It was so, because I was like, well, maybe, maybe this is nothing, but as soon as your podcast was over, it was just the bad shapes were gone. It was just like, I had my eyes closed. It was so out of this world. I've never experienced anything like that. That's amazing. I love that. Well, and what you can learn too, did you guys end up enrolling in the angel membership? Yeah. Okay. So I talk like each month of the angel membership kind of walks you through a new piece of spiritual awakening right. to help you go deeper and deeper and deeper. And we start out with oneness and I talk about oneness a lot in the book, but it's really not for us to feel like we need to be in meditation for eight hours a day or like even a half an hour or 20 minutes a day. Like you can learn how to shift your energy into a different vibration and then carry that vibration with you throughout your day. And that's really, Maddie, where you're like open to that. Yeah. And I feel like what your mom was saying throughout that story is like you live it. Right. Um, not like the other girls don't, but I feel like just don't feel like you have to pressure yourself into this box of like, it right. has to be this way. You're really living it and you're just learning how to be more aware of it yeah. and intention to feel it more throughout your day. Does that make sense? Yeah, there's definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yay. I'm so excited for you that you just like have this because it just brings so much peace. You know, it, uh, that we talk about that, you know, people lose people all the time and it makes me sad. It makes my heart sad that sometimes they're not open to the signs or to, you know, because I just can't imagine not having that. I mean, it's Obviously we wish we could have her here for real, but if we can't have her here physically, I would so much rather have her yeah. here spiritually, yeah. you know, and, and to know that we all feel it and we all can talk about it with each other. And 
I find that when we talk about it more, when we listen to your podcast more, we get, it happens more often, you know, and, and I just, I love it. I, yeah. yeah. I, t- I have to tell everyone, I'm like, please just be open to it. <laughs> And I hope I'm so thankful that, you know, our mom was open to it. Yes. Because I think that's why we are yeah. so open to it. Yeah. <laughs> and I I can't even imagine not being open no, to it. No, I can't either. <laughs> Some people, because, you know, we don't talk about it with everyone because it comes off like we're crazy, you know, and we're just like looking, you know, we're grasping at straws to pretend she's still here. And I think people, you know, think that we're crazy, but it's like, it's happening. I mean, if you, the things we describe or the things that have happened to us, it, it can't all just be coincidence, you know, and it, I feel bad for that. Some people are not as open to it. And luckily mom, from the time we were little was like, this is okay. You know, it's not scary. It's, it's cool. So we were set up so perfectly too. Yeah. We just received the signs. We didn't feel like, you know, mom would think like, she'd be up there like, what are you guys yeah. doing? What are you talking about? Yeah. Cause we knew she was totally open for it. Our mm-hmm. grandma also died at 55. And so my mom was very young and she was her best friend as well. And so to know that our mom got the signs from her mom, I don't know if our family is just super open. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but we are all very open to it, which is really cool. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. Do you feel like the angel membership like has helped you like deepen yeah. that connection with mom? Yeah. I like, think so. so. Yeah. I mean, so again, I don't have a whole lot of time. And so I always feel guilty because I'm like, I can't commit 100% to the angel membership, but I do feel like I watch your, you know, teaching videos and it really just helps me like slow my mind down a little bit and talk to her. And that's how it really helps me. Mm -hmm. And being able to talk to other people in the community as well, that also experience the same stuff is like, yeah, they don't, they, they're like, yeah, that's legit. You know, that's good for you. And so that really just having somewhere to talk to people. I mean, I'm not on social media, so. I don't, nobody knows anything that I'm doing or anything, but it's nice to have a community to go to that I can post something and people are so kind and are like, Mm -hmm. this is amazing. You know, yeah, that's, what's really supportive. They're so supportive. Well, and like, just for me, just learning how to find oneness and just get into that vibration and just to carry that. And like, there was one day I remember I, I started doing it when I first got to the office, like I'd get there a little bit early, have the lights off, just the lamp in the corner. And I just sit there and I, I just get into it. And I remember I was sitting there one day and I, it was, it was so weird because for some reason, since mom passed, I, I don't hear her voice unless I'm like listening to videos or something like that. And it was just clear as day. I just heard hey, Pi. And Pi is my like nickname from her since I was growing up. And it was, it was so, it was just like she was in my ear. And I I instantly just started bawling, you know. It was so just like and I mean that alone was just so worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that right there was worth every angle. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, I love you. I love connecting with you, Harvey's sister. You're amazing. The girls. Yeah. Um, I love it. If anybody who's listening uh, wants to deepen their connection too, we're going to be offering December of 2021 a course on, you know, deepening your connection with your loved ones on the other side and walking you through a whole four-week course, which is really a very profound time of year too in December. There's a couple of times of year where the energy is just more thin and you're able to kind of hold a stronger connection to learn the skill yourself. And this isn't to, to, you know, develop your spiritual gifts to work on other people. This is just to you, right? Because it's your every day. To your point throughout this entire podcast, when you feel and you see those signs coming through for yourself, you know that she's there. And so you need those messages and to learn how to hear those for yourself. So we're going to dive into that full course. We can't wait. We're real If you're in the angel membership, that's, that's the December course. And if you want to hop into the angel membership, you start with oneness 
and then you get a new course dripped in at the beginning of each month. But ladies, I love you. You have to keep in contact with me. I want this story to be a part of the book, you know, of angel stories that, that we're going to be putting together. Yeah. And I love all of you so much. You do love it. I love you. You've changed our world. <laughs> oh, thank you. All my love friends. Okay, keep Jeez. your hearts open, everybody, to all those signs because they're coming through. And I love you. They love you. Thank you so much for listening to the show today. If you think that this would resonate with somebody in your life, please be that angel and share this with them. Ladies, we'll be in touch, okay? Thank you. Bye. 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 Beautiful souls, if you enjoyed today's episode, please tell your people about it and share it on your social accounts. Friends, we're truly here to serve you. When I went through my spiritual awakening, there wasn't one book I could read or one place I could go to for all of the answers. I really had to piece them together myself. So what I did for you was create programs that I wish I had when I was awakening. For those who are seeking these same answers, I created a program called the Angel Membership with so many benefits. It walks you through 12 months of spiritual awakening with your angels and helps you to awaken fully yourself. You see, awakening isn't a one and done thing. There is a process to awakening and this 12 month program walks you through it alongside your angels. In the angel membership, you also get access to a small group of peers to go through this experience with you. You get live access to me twice a month and so much more. For those who want to serve humanity by working as healers themselves, but don't know what their gifts are or where to start. I developed my Angel Reiki School, which opens you to all of your God-given spiritual gifts, teaches you how to use them, and how to start a business for yourself. Students who go through both my Angel Reiki School and Angel Membership Program for at least one year are eligible to apply to be a healer in my online Angel Wellness Center and work alongside me. Friends, I touch on all of this and teach you how to connect with your angels in my new book titled Angels and Awakening. Yep, just like this podcast, the book is available for pre-sale starting September 9th, 2021 on Amazon. Friends, your support helps me produce this podcast. Thank you so, so much for being our angels by listening, sharing, and supporting this show. When you leave a five-star positive review, I enter your name into a monthly drawing to win a free session with me or an Angel Reiki School student. This month's winner is in the show notes. Now, here is a mini Angel Reiki meditation and visualization with your angels to help you lift your vibration and keep it that way the rest of the day. Friends, I want you to start by taking a deep breath in and a deep breath out. I want you to see yourself surrounded by angels. I want you to feel their warm, radiant, loving presence. And I want you to see yourself, it's December 15th, 2021. I want you to see yourself looking healthy, feeling healthy, mind, body, and soul. I want you to go inward and feel that you're so proud of yourself and all that you've been through, all that you've done, all that you've accomplished in 2021. And you're enthusiastically looking forward to 2022. Friends, I want you to connect with God, universe, source, energy, and just take a moment to give thanks give thanks and gratitude for all of the blessings that have come your way and all of the blessings that you stand here right now in faith knowing that they're on their way to you friends
friend, as I lead you in this, your angels want you to ask God, universe source, to show you what it wants for you in your life. See the big picture of what God, universe source, wants for you. I want you to pause and just allow the words, visions, feelings, or knowingness to come to you. And friend, when you connect with the other side, they will only give you positive, loving messages. So just take that moment right now. What is it that God, universe, source wants for you in your life? Allow yourself to be open to it. Allow yourself to see it, hear it, feel it, get a knowingness of it. want you to ask God, universe, source, what is the next step I should take? Again, pause and allow the words, visions, feeling, knowingness to come to you and remember they're only positive, loving messages. What is it that you see, hear, feel, or get a knowingness of when you ask, what is the next step I should take? Friends, I want you to take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And I want you to feel all the love that is surrounding you. Feel yourself lovingly surrounded by your angels. Friends, they are guiding you, directing you, protecting you. And they're giving you signs to validate to you that you're not walking this journey alone. Allow yourself to believe the signs that you see. Allow yourself to follow the callings of your heart responsibly with faith. And allow yourself to feel the loving presence of your angels and your loved ones as they guide you each and every day. Friends, I love you. They love you. Open up your heart to all of the unexpected blessings that are on their way to you right now.